Hello, everyone. It is great to be back in the classroom, which means I'm back on your screen. So behind me, fireworks, obvious. It is just a few days past 4th of July weekend. I hope you enjoyed it. If it's your first 4th of July weekend in the States, uh, I hope you got to observe some of the festivities safely, of course. What we do, we have barbecues, we light fireworks. These are a few traditions that have evolved over time. The day is known as Independence Day, but it's you could think of it as America's National Day. This is the day that Americans celebrate our identity. Well, what is the actual event that is being celebrated? Let's take a look at it. So the day is called Independence Day. And you're probably familiar with the festivities. What is the event? It is right here on the left, signing of the Declaration of Independence in 1776. This is where I want you to think for a moment. What this is, is the beginning of the American Revolution. Now, the American Revolution was a conflict, armed conflict, that continued all the way until the Treaty of Paris, 1783. So this makes American identity something unique. We identify our beginnings not at the end of a conflict, but at the beginning. If you think this, uh, think about this in really simple terms. Think of it as a bad relationship ending in divorce. The colonists in the Americas wanted to separate from Great Britain. Now, declaring that you want a divorce, does that equal divorce? Perhaps. Well, that is how we as Americans understand who we are. Many people around the world celebrate their own identity, marking different events. Let's take a look at the youngest nation in the world, South Sudan. And the celebration in South Sudan is also known as Independence Day. What is South Sudan marking independence from? It's the end of a brutal civil war when South Sudan broke away from Sudan. Now, that event recently, 2011, but they celebrate not the beginning of the conflict, but the end. Now, other places in the world, let's take a look at Peru. Peru also celebrates what they call their Independence Day. They celebrate an event where Jose de San Martin declared that Peru would be independent from Spain. However, this was not in the beginning of a conflict, which went back all the way back to 1814. It was not the end of the conflict, which is all around, which is circa 1826, 28. It's right in the middle of a war for independence, but they're celebrating the event of the leadership of one individual declaring in an open public space that Peru would be independent. That's an interesting way for people to understand who they are as a nation. Now let's keep going. America is not uh, completely alone in identifying our beginning as the start of some type of conflict. Let's take a look at China. Last year, China celebrated, celebrated its 70th National Day. That is a celebration of the end of a conflict. That was a civil war in China. When the Nationalist Party relocated to Taiwan, that is when the People's Republic of China began in 1949. So that's the end of a conflict, not the beginning. Now, if we move on to Ghana, Ghana is remarkably similar to the United States. They don't call it National Day. They call their holiday Independence Day, March 16th. And they celebrate a, guess, get this, Declaration of Independence from Great Britain. Very similar to the US, declaring on a piece of paper that they would break free of Great Britain. Now, if we move on, we can keep going all day. So I'm going to take a look at a few more unique 
uh, situations where people identify themselves not either either at the start of a conflict, or the uh, the end of a conflict, perhaps one major event that shaped people's identity. Let's take a look at France. France has a celebration which we in America call Bastille Day, and what this is is a prison break. It's literally peasants storming a prison to release seven political prisoners in what is known, what the prison is Bastille. And today people gather around the Eiffel Tower and look at fireworks. And this is an event, July 14th, 1789. So this is sort of the beginning of a conflict, but it's an actual breaking, it's a breakout of prison. That's, the, that's what people celebrate as their beginnings of, ide of their identity. Now, Australia, they have a day which is almost the opposite of what Americans celebrate as a national day. They call it Australia Day. They celebrate an event January 26, 1788, which is when the first British fleet arrived in New South Wales. That's the exact opposite of America's Independence Day. We celebrate the end of colonialism. They celebrate the start of colonialism. They don't celebrate identifying as Australian. They actually celebrate their identity as being British. And of course, this has tremendous controversy with the displacement and subjugation and murder of indigenous people, which is more similar to the controversy of uh, Columbus Day in the United States. But that's a great way to look at an inverse of how we as Americans see ourselves as being who we are. So what I want you all to do is take a look at the place you've come from. This is an international classroom. You've lived in different parts of the world. Right now you're here in the US. Talk to your classmates. Tell us how people celebrate their own identity as a country where you come from or a place you've lived. And then compare it to America's celebration of what we call Independence Day. So this should be a fun week ahead. And I can't wait, wait to see what you share.